Okay. So the adjective clause lesson today is extremely important because you learn how to create and how to make adjective phrases out of adjective clauses, and then also how to punctuate them correctly, as well as knowing the, the differences between a positives and adjective phrases. What you need to know is your marks in your writing and communication will be higher based on wide variety of the structure. This structure specifically for adjective clause is designed for the students to use it in order to have that wide variety of sources. Adjective phrases also uh, will be driven out of this. You can use different pronouns. Different pronouns that are created are WH, like who, whom, whose, where, and when, which, and that, and why. These pronouns can replace the regular pronouns. Imagine these two simple sentences that you have. My first sentence is, my friend missed a lecture. And then the second sentence is, she borrowed Sam's notes to review. Because my friend and she, they're the same people, I need to combine these two sentences. What I do in here, when I combine these two sentences, I create more complex structure and having the adjective clauses. I would say, I would change the second sentence. I will remove she. And because my friend is a subject, I need the subject pronoun to replace she. Then my sentence would be my friend who missed the lecture, borrowed Sam's notes to review. This part of a sentence is the second sentence that you changed it. Instead of she borrowed Sam's note, you quickly put it after the noun that you're describing. You're describing your friend, you put the adjective clause you created, who missed the lecture borrowed, borrowed who missed the lecture. This is an adjective clause. So once again, in order to have wide variety of sources in writing, in communication, you need to create adjective clauses, which is one of those techniques to be able to create adjective phrases or a positive with the correct punctuation. It is necessary that in your communication, in writing and speaking, you must have both or three different types. You can use whom for the object case. If your object, for example, if you have a sentence that the candidate won by a landslide, my short sentence, my second short sentence is many people admire him, I need to create an adjective clause instead of him, I would say whom, because whom is the pronoun that is replacing the object. I have my first sentence because I'm describing the candidate, the candidate won by a, a landslide, many people admire him. So my sentence would be as the candidate, whom many people admire won by a landslide. So whom many people admire, it is specifically an adjective clause. It is exactly the same sentence, the same second sentence, but I put up place whom because it is the object case. Usually we put the adjective uh, clause or phrase quickly right after the noun that we describe. Sometimes we put it at the beginning of a sentence before the noun for the stronger meaning that we're gonna discuss later on today. We use whose uh, to indicate the position. I have two short sentences, I admire Professor Brooks. My second short sentence is, his books were stolen. If you have many short sentences, your score in the test will be lower because your sentences are short and dull. It makes your writing not very advanced. In order to avoid that, you need to have the adjective clause given. You change the second sentence. Instead of his book, you say whose books? And then you start by, I admire Professor Brooks, whose books were stolen. You can also use that as the pronoun. We use that for people, for places, for things. It also introduces information necessary to explain a noun. For example, if I have a short sentence as I met a man on the bus today, and then my second short sentence would be he works at the World Bank. To combine these two, I say the man that I met on the bus today works at the World Bank. So it is very important to use the wide variety of the structure in order to have higher score in your tests. And of course, it doesn't make your sentences um, boring, basically. 
You use which for places and things. You need to introduce extra information about and already specific nouns. My very first short sentence would be a new car needs very little gas. The second sentence would be, it was a gift from my son. To combine these two sentences, I need to have the second sentence, creating it as an adjective clause with one of those pronouns and put it right after the noun that is describing. In this case, my new car is the noun that I'm defining. So I would say, my new car, which was a gift from my son, needs a very little gas. If you pay attention in this sentence, we have two commas before the adjective clause, one comma before which and one comma after the son. When you have this adjective clause, basically you're adding extra information. We call it non-essential adjective clause or phrase that we're going to talk about it later on. Basically, you add this adjective plus to make your, to decorate your sentences, to make your sentences more advanced and make them interesting in the complexity of the structure. But if I say my new car needs very little gas, you know what my new car is. I'm just adding extra information. If it is adding extra information, you must put comma before and after the adjective clause. So when an adjective clause provides extra information, it is set off by commas. It is very important. And remember, punctuation is considered as the emotion of your sentence. So if I don't punctuate my sentences properly, the, the meaning doesn't cross properly. We also use when and where as the pronoun. We used to uh, replace them like in, in which or on which. We don't separately say which. In which or on which can be where or when. If I say July 25th was sad for me as the first short sentence and the second short sentence, I left home on that day. To combine them, I use when, I say July 25th, when I left home was sad for me. I give you one more example to clarify the meaning. I have two more short sentences. I have always wanted to visit the big house. My second short sentence is Julio or Julio lives in that house to combine both. I would say I have always wanted to visit the big house where Julio lives. So it is very important to use the proper pronoun based on the meaning of a sentence. It is very important to add and change the second simple sentence to add it as an adjective clause within your first sentence to create that complexity of the structure. We also use why as the pronoun usually introduces a noun clause if you use why. And then my two sh short sentences would be my cousin, for example, ran away, and I don't know why. In order to do that, I need to combine it with the pronoun why. These words are all considered as pronouns. To use them correctly, the place and what type of pronoun are absolutely essential to cross the proper meaning. So I would say, I don't know why my cousin ran. So these pronouns interchangeably can be used and to create adjective clauses. Now, what I want everybody to do, I will share these uh, files within the chat box with everybody in case if some of you guys did not receive this. You need to download these files. I send you the first file, more than welcome to open it. And then we're gonna start working on combining the sentences and creating adjective clauses. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to ask um, Alex, you do number, there, um, there are basically nine of them, two, four, six. Okay, so I would say Alex, you do number one. Uh, Fiona, you do number two and three. Howling, you do number four and five. Lucas, do number six and seven. And William, you do number eight and nine. Combine the sentences, create adjective clauses within the sentences. I give you around maybe 10 minutes to practice. And uh, you write down the answers in the chat box. I keep the chat box open. Did everybody receive the file? Okay. Combine the sentences. Make sure you put the sentence number beside that. And then write down the answers in the chat. I give each one of you around maybe five, five, seven minutes to do that. 
you need to use the pronouns. Be careful about using of the pronouns. When you use who is the subject case, just a quick um, recap. And we use whom is the object case, whose is the possession, defining the possession. And that is used for people, things, and places, which is used for places and things. Where and when is for the time and the place, and why is defining the reason. Do I have everyone uh, okay with the, with opening the file? Can everybody can everybody open the first file, adjective clause file, with no problem? Okay. So I'll put the numbers beside each number one. Students, hmm. um, you don't need some. Alex, you can say students, students do well on tests if they prepare beforehand. My short sentence and the second one, some students are anxious. So I would say students who are anxious, instead of some students, you replace it with who. So the second sentence subject can be replaced by these pronouns. That's why we call them pronouns. Who will replace the subject of the second sentence in order to put it right after your uh, noun that you're defining. Instead of some students, you use who. Avoid repetition, right? Just to avoid redundancy. So you say students who are anxious do well on tests if they prepare beforehand. So you were absolutely correct. Aside from you can just simply eliminate some. Um, well, the meaning of this sentence, it says students who are anxious do well on tests if they prepare beforehand. It wanted to say that the students who are anxious, they need to practice more. Does that make sense, Alex? Yeah. So the meaning is a little bit, might be a little bit confusing, but that is the meaning of the sentence. They wanted to emphasize that if the students are anxious, they need to practice more. They need to practice um, Yes, they need to practice beforehand. Very good. Very good, Alex. So I'm waiting uh, for everyone to write down the answers in the chat box. Thank you, Fiona. Number two, a research paper on environmental problem reserved, uh, received an award, and I wrote the paper. So I wrote a research paper on environmental problem and received an award. You can also say, yeah, Fiona, that was a correct answer. I wrote, um, I wrote a paper, a research paper, which was an environmental problem and received an award. Your sentence is correct though, Fiona, that is one way to do that. Look, as you did number six, British Petroleum uh, received criticism because of the oil spill in the Gulf and it is known as BP. So he said British Petroleum, whom? I don't use whom. I would say which is known, right? Um, because British Petroleum is a subject. So I would say, um, and this is passive. So you can use British Petroleum, try again, Locus, okay? William number eight, on my vacation, I made a boy and my father disliked him. Um, oh, eight and nine. My father disliked the boy whom I met on vacation. Very good. And uh, you did seven and eight, William? You, you were supposed to do the last two. Can you also do number nine? Okay. Thank you very much. And Locus, I want you Wait, to try again. Which one was I supposed to do? Who's, who's speaking? Uh, Helen. 
all in, okay. I think you were supposed to do, I can't recall. Alex, two and three, Fiona, three, four and five. Colin, six and seven. Okay. Doesn't matter, any of those two, as long as you, you know how to create an adjective clause. So Lucas, make sure that you change yours, number six. So British Petroleum, Locus, which is known as BP. You can use which. This is a, is a thing, right? Is a noun, is a thing, is a people you can use at times. Who for people, but which for things and titles in the case. Like British Petroleum, which is known as BP, received a very good. Yes, Locus, good work, thank you. I'm still waiting to... Here, number three answer. Fiona, number three was yours, I guess, right? Number three and five and seven are left. In. Seven and nine. I thought mine was four and five. Mm. Fiona, is that is that what you're asking? Number two and three. You did you did two, right? Number two and three. Alex was supposed to do number. I gave everybody two of them except Alex. Alex was doing just the first one. William, you're doing number number nine as well. Who's doing number seven? William did it, so I read it the long. So the long black and beautiful dress was worn by Mary. I can also say Mary wore a long dress, which was a dress which was long and black and beautiful. But your sentence is okay as well. Number, number six, British Petroleum known as BP received yes, Holly, good work, okay. William number nine and Fiona number three. And who was supposed to do number five? I'm still waiting. Recently, a large, uh, what number is that? Yeah, five. Recently, a large airplane had a serious accident. It was carrying too many passengers. Recently, a large airplane, which was carrying too many passengers, had a serious accident. So try again, Locust. Recently, a large airplane, which was carrying too many passengers, had a serious accident. So the key is you change the second sentence and then put it right after the noun that is described by the second sentence. Pay attention. You need to change the subject with a pronoun that you learn. In this case, because it is an airplane, you can use which for the things. So I would say recently, a large airplane, which was carrying too many passengers, had a serious accident. Number nine, William. Jacob is a student in my biology class. His father is an ambassador from Kenya. The class meets twice a week. That's a complex one. 
Jacob is a student in my biology class. Whose father? Very good, very good, William. But whose spelling is W-H-O-S-E? No apostrophe and is one pronoun. In this case, because we learn whose is a possessive case, if I say his book, I say whose books. In here, because it said whose father, his father, I change it as whose father. You were correct, aside from the spelling, W-H-O-S-E. So I would say Jacob is a student in my biology class whose father is an ambassador from Kenya, where or when, because it said twice a week is a time, right? When the class meets twice a week. So once again, Jacob is a student in my biology class whose father is an ambassador from Kenya, when the class meets twice a week. Recently, a large airplane, which was carrying too many passengers. Thank you, yes. I think we covered everything except the, the third one. Uh, Fiona, are you, are you ready to give us the answer for the third? I was confused on what your question you gave me, so. No problem, that's fine. Uh, would you possibly do number three, try again? Doesn't matter which number. Uh, so as long as you do two of them, that's that's cool. So I give you a hint. My driveway is in front of my house, and I park four cars there. So there relates to my driveway. So I need to change this sentence. Instead of there, I can say where where I park four cars, I say my driveway, where I park four cars, is in front of my house. Once again, my driveway, where I park four cars, is in front of my house. So adjective clause creation might be a little bit um, slow at the beginning, but it's absolutely practical before we change it into the next step. So what I want you to do now, I want each one of you, because we learned about the adjective clauses with the previous one. Thank you very much, Fiona. Um, your sentence has dangling modifier, Fiona. For number three, if I say my driveway is in front of the house and then, and then I put it in that sentence right after that, I have a dangling modifier. What is a dangling modifier? The sentence that I'm reading as in the chat box is, my driveway is in front of my house where I park four cars. This is incorrect because where I park four cars should be right after my driveway. And then you say my driveway where I park four cars is in front of my house. If I have where I park four cars at the end of the sentence, the sentence is incorrect. Even though it might look okay, it is not okay. So for the next exercise, what I suggest you do, I want you to complete these sentences with your own words this time. Try to fill in the blanks by your own words. I want all of you to try answering and completing these sentences with the adjective clauses, all those six numbers. Go ahead. I want you to complete the sentences with an adjective clause number one to number six. You can choose three of them or you can do all of them. If you want to practice more, some of you guys are faster. I know that William is extremely fast. Locus is extremely fast. So if you want to do more, do all of them. You can only do three of them for the good practice. Make sure that when you complete the sentences, the meaning should make sense and it should be the appropriate adjective clause.
Would you like to try the first one, Alex? Yeah, I'm doing all six. I'll just send it in one message. No problem. A few more minutes. So either all of them, all of those six, or three of them would be enough. As long as you have three, if you would like to do more and you're faster, you can do complete the sentence. Make sure your adjective clauses are explaining the subject. For example, if my subject is the person, I need to describe that person within a clause. And the clause definition is, at least you must have a subject and a verb in your clause. Later on, after the break, we're gonna learn how to create the phrases and we're gonna come back to this exercise to shorten them because now we build up more complex the structure. But after the break, we're gonna come back and then we're gonna change them into more complex. Yeah, as the positive or phrase. phrase. The person whom Jake saw yesterday suddenly fainted. Ah, uh, the person, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Very good, yeah. You can say Jake saw a person yesterday. The person whom Jake saw yesterday suddenly fainted. That was very good. Alex, number one, I'll never forget the time when I accidentally ate a bee. Very good. Good work. Thank you for hard work. Number two, I gave up my seat. Fiona, good work. Um, the boss. Then again, I gave up my seat to a woman who was pregnant on the bus. My seat, I gave up my seat on the bus to a woman. So you can change your sentence for number two, Fiona. So something about the woman, something belonged to a woman whose bag was broken, whose umbrella was stolen. whose face was happy, something related to the woman with the possession. I gave up my seat on the bus to a woman. Try again, Fiona, for number two. Number three, the person who saw the giant tarantula suddenly fainted. <laughs> um, in this case, I don't say whom in your sentence number three, Fiona. I would say who because you're talking about the person. If you want to use whom, you should use an object case. Your sentence is a subject case. Try again. Number two and three, try again, Fiona. I'll never forget, yeah, I'll never forget a time, Lucas, when schools shut down multiple times. Yeah, and then scary still, Lucas, because um, who knows about pandemic, maybe um, we've heard that something is fourth wave on the shutdown. Hopefully not, yeah multiple times. Uh, William, um, I'm waiting for you once you're ready. Howleen, any of those would be okay. Everyone criticized my opinion and then something about the opinion, which was quite a surprise. Yes, that is a good sentence, Fiona. You can go ahead and try number two and number five and six. Any of those three would be fine. I'm still waiting for Helen and William to join and answer some of those questions. Lucas, often people who make mistakes end up being successful. Very good sentence and very true, Lucas, good work. Thank you, very good sentence. People who make mistakes end up being successful. Yes, because we never make a mistake, we never know. Number six. William, you want to try number six? And Howleen, I'm still, I think I'm still waiting for Howleen to. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Fiona, for hard work. I can yeah, already um, give you the. Uh... I already like the number two. 
oh wait no do number um yeah any of those doesn't matter because your sentence would be different anyway um any number any three of them. i did three perfect okay thank you uh, fiona thank you for correcting i gave up my seat in the bus to a woman who's who was pregnant you can't use who's pregnant you want to say who was pregnant that's a different story whose is possessive for example when you have um possession I say his books i say whose books you can say a woman whose umbrella was broken for example whose whose bag a woman whose bag was was white for example something that belonged to a woman specifically defined in this one the person who saw the person who saw the giant tarantula suddenly painted it yeah you changed the change the sentence that is correct um, if you want to use as who but in this case is a whom case which is uh, somewhat as the object case the person for example i saw a person i is a subject a person is the object so you need to use it as the object case. William, I'm still waiting to do for you to do number six. And Howling, can you report what you're up to, please? Pardon? William and Howling, you can do number five and six, please. Okay. Fiona, you try who, number three again, and number two again, because who's pregnant is, is, a, is an incorrect phrase. You can say who was pregnant. Many people find Maryland uh, where trees talk. Exciting. Trees talk in Maryland. I've never heard of it, interesting. Yes, trees communicate, of course, through their roots, through pulses, but talking is a little. Grammatically, your sentence is okay, Hauleen. Thank you, Hauleen. Number five, people, often people who are serious about their education end up being successful. Very good. That is a good sentence. All right. So, very good. Fiona, number three again. Thank you for the hard work. The person I gave I gave up my seat. I gave up my seat to a woman. Um, okay, once again, uh, Fiona, I'll I'll try to explain who's. Once again, when you use who's, you must have an adjective in your original sentence. If I say his books, I would say whose books. In this case, because of the woman in the sentence. You can say whose jacket was was stolen, whose bag was, you want to say her bag was white, whose bag was stolen, whose umbrella was broken, whose bag was white. You want to say her bag is, is white or her umbrella is broken. Instead of her, you use whose. Does that make sense, Fiona? So your sentences are still having some dangling modifier. Maybe I can do something better with the next, um, hold on a second, let me open the next file. So the next file that I'm opening, um, I also send it through the chat box if you would like to save it. And please let me know if you cannot still see it. This might make your job a little bit easier. This is the second step that we're going and continuing changing your adjective clauses into adjective phrases. So we, we will try to build better sentence structure, combining two sentences in order to have more complex structure for higher marks in communication. Now we're trying to learn how to create an adjective phrase from an adjective clause. A clause definition is 
a clause considered where the subject at least contains one subject, one verb. If my first sentence is the man who is talking to John is from Korea, if I eliminate who and is, the rest of a sentence would be with an adjective phrase. So talking is a phrase. I eliminate the pronoun. I eliminate verb B. My, the rest of my verb is ing form. The second sentence is considered as phrase. So there are two ways adjective clause can be changed into adjective phrase. Make sure that you have ing form. If it is ing form, that's okay. Thank you, Fiona. I can't really read the files you've sent. I had an open another, yeah. Um, the files that I send need to be saved on your computer, Fiona. And then when you open it, after you save it, when you open it, because they are PDF files, they're official PDF files. If you save it on your computer, then you can read. Maybe <coughs> on your computer, excuse me, you don't have a PDF reader. If you have the reader, then that's fine. Let me know, I might be able to email them to you as well. The second clause is the, the ideas, the ideas which are presented in that book are good. If I want to shorten it and make it adjective phrase from this sentence, I would say the ideas presented in that book are good. So what we are doing in here, we are shortening by eliminating WH, by eliminating verb B. We can only shorten it if my pronoun is who, which, and that. If I have whose or whom or where or when, I can never use it as the phrase. In English, we use wide variety of sources to give you a better mark and higher mark in communication. Anne is the woman who is responsible for the error to shorten it and making it as a phrase. You say Anne is the woman responsible for the error. If I have my verb in the passive, I keep it in the past participle. If I have it in the ing form gerund, I keep it the same. If I have an adjective, I just eliminate the verb be and the pronoun. Just the verb be and the pronoun. Just the verb be and the pronoun. But if I have something, um, if I have just the verb, there's no verb be, English has an alphabet that consists of 26 letters, then I just eliminate simply that. I create a better sentence as English has an alphabet consisting of 26 letters. So far so good, no questions? So make sure that you eliminate the pronoun to create a phrase. Why we are doing this? From two simple sentences, you were able to create adjective clauses. Now, from adjective clauses, you create adjective phrases. We need to do that specifically to have better structures and different various structures in your, in your communication. If I have, for example, George Washington, who was the first president of the United States, was a wealthy colonist and the general in the army, I can eliminate who and was, and my sentence would, have, would end up having the phrase in here the first president of the United States. Don't forget comma before and after because everybody knows George Washington, the president, right? Remember, remember, remember. If you have a noun and after your noun, you have a group of words expressing and explaining the noun, this is called a positive. A positives are very, very popular and is a form of adjective phrases. They are born from adjective clauses when you shorten the sentences. But the difference is, in a, if the adjective phrase, you follow a noun by a phrase that is considered an appositive. A positive is the same phrase meaning as the same subject or the object. For example, if I say Paris, the capital of France, the capital of France and Paris, they're the same places. So the second, second phrase, the capital of France is considered as a positives. A positives in the middle of a sentence, we need a comma before and comma after. If I say I read the book by Mark Twain, a famous American author, who is Mark Twain? A famous American author. So they are the same people. This is considered as a positive. Um, did everybody receive the file? Do you need to, do you need me to send you the file again, just in case?
Okay. I'm going to share the file once again because I noticed some of you guys might have had some issues. If by delay the arrival of, of you all is in the room, there might be a challenge of downloading the file. I'll send them to you again. Maybe there was a glitch. Fiona, please let me know if you have any challenge to, uh, to download the, the file. William, I appreciate if you do so. And let me know if you have a challenge. Alex, Haulin, Lokes, let me know if you have a challenge to download the file, please. I can't download it. It's just the, I had to open it with a different software last time. No problem. Can you save it at least? Perfect. Thank you, Alex. Okay. I know sometimes uh, some laptops are not really friendly in on that end with the okay what i'm going to do now i'm going to open the next file about the appositive we'll learn about the appositive and we're going to practice the the appositive now positives are known as a group of words explaining a noun your noun can be a subject your noun can be the object what i'm going to do i'm going to review the appositive we're going to take a break after the break we're gonna have a good practice on a positive before I show you a video. So a positives are considered as noun or um, considered as adjective phrases. And a positive is a noun or a pronoun. Could be one noun, could be a group of words, but there's no verb, there's no subject in the positive. They are modifying and making the meaning of your noun stronger. So is a noun or a pronoun, and then the appositive will be in red. If I say your friend, friend is the noun, Bill is the appositive. So Bill and my friend, they're the same people, is in trouble. So if I say your friend is in trouble, you definitely ask me a question, who, which friend? But if I tell you your friend Bill is in trouble, you say, ah, now I know. We use a positive to make the meaning of a sentence stronger, to modify, to make sure that the meaning is coming through. If I say my brother's car, and I explain what kind of car, I say sporty red convertible with bucket seats, comma before, comma after, is the envy of friends, this is an appositive. There's no verb in an appositive. It's a group of words describing either the subject or the object in a sentence, describing a noun or a pronoun. If I say the chief surgeon, and I'm describing the surgeon, an expert in organ transplant procedure, comma before, comma after, took your nephew on a hospital tour, then that is the appositive. Appositives are very popular in writing. It makes your writing stronger. It is suggested to have, uh, to, for you to use appositives adjective phrases, adjective clauses, and different types of sentences. To avoid repetition or redundancy in the structure, you need to have all those three. And a positive phrase sometimes usually follows the word that it explains that is defined. It may also precede that. Sometimes it appears after, as you can see most of the time, comma before, comma after. Sometimes it appears before. If I say a bold innovator, and then I explain which bold innovator, Vasily Kandinsky, then this is an appositive appearing at the beginning of a sentence before the noun. In this case, I only need one comma after. I can also say the first state to ratify the US constitution, I have a comma after, and then I say Delaware. So this is an appositive and defining Delaware. If I say beautiful colleague, and then I say skip as a subject, then the beautiful collie would be an appositive. It is very important to have the correct punctuation of the appositive. In some cases, the nouns that are explained within the appositive, the information is essential in the sentence to be described. However, uh, we don't move the place of commas, we just put the commas around the appositive. If it is at the beginning, we need comma after. If it is in the middle of a sentence, we put before and after. If it is at the end of a sentence, we need comma preceding it or before. In this case, if I say, for example, US President John Kennedy 
if I if I have that, like just we just leave it alone if the sentence is clear, because everybody knows the U.S. President John F. Kennedy, which was known for the eloquent and inspirational speech. If the noun is clear, comma might not be necessary. But if I say John Kennedy, and I want to make sure that which John Kennedy I'm talking about, just to avoid confusion, I put comma and then say John Kennedy, the popular US president. That is in a positive to clarify. If I have, for example, two John Kennedy in a sentence, and I want to make sure which John Kennedy I'm talking about, I need a positive after each. The first one, John Kennedy, the popular US president, was almost an entirely different person than John, John Kennedy, the young naval reservist. So punctuation is the emotion of your sentence, not to make a mess, not to forget that. What we're gonna do right now, I'm gonna give you a break time, come back at 5.15 and we're gonna continue. Enjoy your break. 